Welcome to our mermaid series. Today we're doing mermaid tales. Let's get started by choosing a mermaid name. First, you'll find the first letter of your first name. For example, my name is Kayla, so my first name starts with a K. So I would circle the name Sandy. Now find your birth month. My birthday month is March, so I would choose the magical. Now you'll put your two names together. For example, my name is Sandy the Magical. What's your mermaid name? Welcome to Mermaid Tales. We're gonna start with our first story. This one's called Mermaids Fast Asleep by Robin Riding. Do you suppose, way down deep, there are mermaids fast asleep? Wearing brightly colored scales on their long and curvy tails? Mer mothers, mer fathers too, with golden eyes and hair of blue. Counting fish instead of sheep, rocking mer babies to sleep. While the dolphins swimming by, sing to them a lullaby. Way down deep, way down deep, are there mermaids fast asleep? If I could only swim that far and deep to where the mermaids are. If I could watch them lay their heads upon their golden sandy beds, their secret, oh, I would keep and not disturb the mermaid's sleep. Peaceful on the ocean floor with now and then a gentle snore. Breathing water like it's air way down deep, down deep, down there. Way down deep, way down deep. Are there mermaids fast asleep? Do you suppose, way down deep, there are mermaids fast asleep? Silver mermaids with golden hair, way down deep, down deep, down there. Way down deep, way down deep. Are there mermaids fast asleep? Are there mermaids fast asleep? The end. Now we're going to learn about ocean zones. Let's get ready. Let's talk about where a mermaid lives. As you know, people homes can sometimes have different layers. You could have an attic, a living room, or a basement. The ocean is a home to many creatures, and just like people homes, it has layers. Can you guess how many layers the ocean has? If you guessed five, you're right. The ocean has five distinct layers called zones. From the top down, the zones are sunlight, twilight, midnight, abyss, and trench. What do you notice about the color of the water as the zones get deeper? They get darker. Which layer do you think is the warmest? If you guess the sunlight layer, you're right. As you can guess, the deeper the zone, the colder the waters, and the shallower the zone, the warmer the waters. Let's make our own ocean layers. For this activity, you'll need paper. And you can choose between paint, crayons, colored pencils, any of those. Whatever you decide to choose, make sure that you have blue and various shades. Divide your paper into five equal parts. Start at the top with the lightest shade of blue. As you work your way down, make each shade of blue darker. When we're done adding our layers, we're going to add one sea creature to each layer that represents that zone. So for the sunlight layer, I'm adding a jellyfish. For the twilight zone, I'll be making an octopus. For the midnight zone, we'll add the angler fish. For the abyss, we'll draw the sea spider.
Let's go over our zones one more time. The top zone is sunlight. The second is twilight. The middle zone is the midnight zone. Then the abyss. And lastly, we have the trench. There's not much that can live in the trench zone. So we have a friendly sea cucumber hanging out in the bottom. Here's our last mermaid tale. And this one's my favorite. The title is Pearl and it's by Molly Idol, also one of my favorite illustrators. Pearl. In the vast sea of blue, some mermaids watched over the waves breaking upon the endless beaches. Some kept an eye on the great coral reefs. Some tended to the towering forests of kelp rising from the ocean floor. Some guarded the giants of the deep, and Pearl deeply yearned to be one of them. Mother, I am big enough to help too, she said. Yes, Pearl, her mother considered. Come with me. I have something very important for you to look after. They swim up and up and up, past the breaking waves until the sandy shore stretched all around them. This, said her mother, is yours. She placed a single grain of sand in Pearl's hand, yours to care for every day and keep safe every night. But mother, protested Pearl, you said I could help with something important. The smallest of things can make a great difference, Pearl, her mother replied. With that, Pearl was left alone. A wave of disappointment washed over her. She was surrounded by thousands of grains of sand, millions, billions beyond counting. And here she was, entrusted with just one. Her heart grew heavy, and the weight of it pulled her down, down, down. Where the salt of her tears mingled with the sea, Pearl glowered at the grain of sand. She clenched it in her tiny fist. Then, from beneath her fingers, came a faint light. But when Pearl opened her hand, it was gone. Pearl closed her hand around the tiny grain again, gently this time. The sand resting on her palm had a luster to it that had not been there before. Every day, Pearl preserved it, polished it, and played with it. Every night she protected it and slowly, very slowly, it began to grow and grow and glow. And as it grew lighter, so did Pearl's heart. It seemed to boil them up and up and up until it rose into the vast sea of stars. Pearl beamed up at it. It beamed back. Its light touched everything. It sparkled on the breaking waves and the coral creating new reefs. It glowed in the tides flowing through the towering forests and illuminated the giants rising from the deep. And it shone upon Pearl. The End Thank you for listening in on our last story. We're going to end our mermaid tale story time with a really fun craft. For our craft, you'll need a piece of paper, poster board, or cardboard. You'll also need scissors and paint, markers, or colored pencils, and ribbon. First, we're going to fold our project in half down the center. Next, we're going to draw our mermaid tail. Start at the top, and do a gentle curve all the way to the bottom corner. For my fin, I'm going to do some scalloped edges and slowly work your way up in a gentle slope. Now take your scissors and cut it out. Now open up your tail and lay it flat on your work table. Now it's time to decorate your tail I'm going to use paint and markers.
For this part of our project, you'll want an adult to help you. You'll need an X-Acto knife or your scissors. We're going to cut four slits at the top of our mermaid tail. This is where we're going to lace ribbon through. Now we're going to take our ribbon and lace it through the slits we made in the top of our mermaid tail. Now that our ribbon is placed on, you can put your tail on for pretend play.